Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefined Horizons, and this video is a continuation on the series of videos that we are doing uh, that uh, cover how to put together the tie lines and the boundary anno drawing for uh, this uh, boundary survey that we did in Elk Grove. Um, and so, uh, what I did in the last video is I showed you guys how to put together the record references table. So what we're going to do in this video is we're actually going to go in and uh, we're going to add the record references to some of these uh, distances on our bearing and distance labels. So why is that important? Uh, it's important because that's the main way uh, most boundary surveyors communicate to you about how they uh, resolved the, the boundary. Um, so uh, most boundary surveyors that I don't that I know don't don't put a, a narrative on their map. A narrative explanation about how they resolve the boundary. That's something I try and do here. That's something I learned from Evan Page um, a long time ago. Evan Evan Page is an excellent boundary surveyor. He taught me that as a young surveyor. Um, but you don't you don't get that most of the time. You don't get a narrative on the boundary resolution, and uh, so all you have to go off of is kind of the clues that the uh, retracing surveyor gives you in the. Uh, record references on the distances shown on the survey. And so um, it's important information, and even with the survey narrative, uh, we, it's still important information we want to get it right. So that's what, what I'm going to try and teach you guys in this video. I'll warn you, I try and keep these videos to 10 minutes. This one will go long. Um, and I may not even get to, to all this line work. <clears throat> but it, this is really important. So if you can master what we're going to talk about um, in this video, and the other videos in this series, and you can also understand and, and master uh, our video series on boundary survey map notes, you're, you're a, 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 a good portion of the way or majority of the way to, to becoming a, a, what, I, what I would call a good boundary surveyor. So, um, so to get set up, what, what you want to do if you're in my shop to get set up is we're going to be working in the boundary, boundary anno drawing. That's the main uh, drawing that we're going to make changes in. So you want to open your boundary anno drawing and then XREF in your boundary line work drawing. And then um, it's also good uh, to have the boundary line work drawing open in case you need to make some changes. Uh, make sure you run that by your principal uh, before you make major changes. And then it's also good to have the search drawing open just for reference. And then um, usually I open the uh, the map the map or deed cogos of the adjoiners. Um, so you want that stuff open in CAD, and then in uh, your PDF viewer, you want to go ahead and open the uh, most of the record references. You want to go ahead and get those open. So I've done that here. Okay, so uh, so you want that that ready. Um, you want your uh, table of record references ready. Okay, so once you have that, you can start. So we're, we're working in the boundary anno drawing, and what I like to do is I'm going to start with the subject parcel. Okay, so we have these distances here. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go in and add some references to the to the distance. Okay, so the, the values that are shown here, these are going to be our calculated values. Okay, uh, so we put a space, oops, we put a space and then C for calculated. And then what we want to indicate is, um, now it could be a measured value. If there's a monument on each end, it'll be an M for measured instead of C. But in this case, my parcel hadn't been surveyed, it wasn't monumented. So these, these distances around the subject parcel, our RH distance for this current survey is always going to be a C, which is a calculated. Okay, but then then you want to say, all right, that's what you calculated. Um, was there any historical measurement that you could compare that to? And so in this case, the answer is yes. Um, so we can compare that to the, to the grant deed. Now, you have to be careful because on this particular, this particular parcel, uh, the grant deed is this whole thing here. And then the landowner comes in later and they parcel off this right-of-way take right here. So this gets cut out. And so because we're on that inside line here, right here, this is rotated 90. Because we're on that, that, that inside line of the right-of-way take, these distances aren't actually called out in our vesting deed. They're called out in the deed for the, for the right-of-way take. Okay. Now, I don't love that. What I wish, uh, you know, what I wish you would, people would do is uh, when the agency comes in to take the right-of-way take, uh, the landowner, uh, as part of negotiations, sh should get their surveyor to prepare a revised land description form. 
um, that reflects the the right away take. This is a this was a right away taken fee, not an easement. <clears throat> but that didn't happen. And it usually doesn't. So okay, <clears throat> so the reference then is not the vesting deed, but it's actually this this right away take that happened in 2017. So if you look at our table here, that is going to be R8. That's our reference right here, R8. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and add that. So right after the C with no space, we're going to say parentheses R8. Okay, and I know because I held the record that that, that distance is the same. Okay, so what that means is uh, we held the distance that was in R8 because C and R8 are the same. That's what that means. Okay, so that's actually going to be the same all the way around because I was able to hold record all the way around the right-of-way take. So we're just going to be able to say that. Now, in this particular survey, boundary survey, I was able to hold uh, both the record distances in my grant deed and in uh, most of the adjoiners because the deeds fit together well. Um, that is not what usually happens. So that's part of the reason why this is a good, a good learning example because it's fairly simple. Okay, so we can just indicate all the way around here that we held the record. Okay, now this right here, this is just a tie line. I just, it's good when you can as a surveyor to, to put in a perpendicular tie to the adjacent center line. And so that's what I did here. So this is, this is just a, um, a tie over to the, uh, to the center line, original road center line. And so we're actually going to, um, this isn't going to be an R8 because that distance isn't in R8. It isn't in any deed. It's just a tie line. So I'm just going to put a C on it. It's just a helpful tie for future surveyors. I come to this corner and I say, hey, I'm going to give you a, a tie out to the, uh, it's actually a, an extension, a tie out to the center line. Okay, so same thing here. This isn't in any deed. Um, it's just something that we're providing. It's, a, it's an informational tie that we're providing. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now you'll notice um, when when I do that that uh, they're not exactly 27 feet, right? So that the, that was probably the intent was to take a 27 foot strip, but they're not. This one's a little shy, and this one's a little long. Why is that? Well, that's because uh, the surveyor that prepared the right of way take um, had a had a somewhat different. Um, uh, bearing or direction for the center line of Bradshaw Row, Bradshaw Row. So, in other words, uh, these two lines are not exactly parallel. Okay. Now, I don't know exactly how that was done, but I can tell you from experience that uh, when a public agency is coming in to do a right-of-way take like this, oftentimes that surveyor isn't doing that. That right-of-way surveyor is not always going to the same level of effort. To resolve a boundary as a as a retracing surveyor of the subject parcel, so I suspect that's why there's small differences there. So the intent was probably for that to be a 27 foot uh, dedication, and we're just getting pinched along that existing center line. Now the way you can tell that is you just go into that Kogo of the right of way take, and you can pull a couple dims on here, and say, you know, were these guys trying to take 27 feet? Yeah, it looks like they were trying to take 27 feet. Right, that was the intent. Okay, so I just have a slightly different, um, I have a slightly different um, ah, resolution for this center line of Bradshaw Road, and so that's that's why you're seeing a, uh, a little bit of a difference here. Okay, so uh, what you could do in a situation like that is you could do uh, something like this. You could say uh, intent per R8 was... 27 foot strip. Okay, uh, so that's helpful information there. I got to fix that justification. It should be right justified. Um, so you might just do that. You might just say, "Hey, we, we found this." Oh, and you could do that in a separate surveyor note too, um, which actually might be better. Uh, but just for now, so I don't forget. I'm going to go ahead and put those notes in, and I may move those. Uh, I may move those to a surveyor note. Okay. 
All right, so uh, this uh, distance here is in our right away deed. So uh, we can put a C and R8 on that. Okay, now when I come off of this line now, I'm leaving the right away take because this is the right away take that the city Elk Grove did for the roundabout. And I'm back on my the original boundary of my grant deed. So this is going to be C. That's our distance per the RH, current RH survey. And then we're going to put in, we held the record distance for our original grant deed, which for in my shop is almost R, always R1. Now it's starting to get a little bit crowded here. Um, so what what sometimes what you have to do is you gotta might not let me do it. So I'm gonna just bump the distance. Oh, it's like it's not. Um, it's like it's not in text. So I want to be able to uh, just put a line break in there. Because uh, we're just our labels running into the crow's feet. All right, so same thing here. Um, this is also going to be uh, a C and an R one. So we held the distance in our subject parcel vesting deed. Okay. Um, and then now I'm going to come back. Let's see. Okay, so we don't have anything to compare this to on the south adjoiner because the south adjoiner runs all the way down, right? He doesn't. The south adjoiner doesn't break up these pieces like we did. So there's nothing else to add there. Okay, same thing on here. Okay, now this one, we will actually have a third distance. So uh, this is C. So that's from our current survey. Okay, it's R1, but it's also could be the distance in the adjoiner deed. And I actually remember that di this distance for this course in the adjoiner deed was, um, was actually something a little bit different. Okay, and I actually, I messed up. I have to be careful here. This, it, it actually, this distance from here to here where the crow's feet are shown actually isn't the R1 distance, okay? Because there was that right-of-way take that came in and, and subtracted this out. So the, the, the D distance actually runs from here to here. Okay, so what we need to show that is we need our level two crow's feet. So we're gonna show what we call an overall distance there. So we're gonna go uh, pretty crow's feet left L2 and you guys will see how this works in a second. We got one more of those. We want right L2. So I'm just putting in my level two crow's feet. Now I have to scale that by the up by the, the scale factor of the drawing. So I think we're at 60 scale. Oh, so that's wrong. It must be six. Yeah, okay. So <clears throat> what this allows us to do now is uh, we can put an overall distance on here. Okay, so I'm going to move the crow's feet over. That's, uh, I rotated. I want to move. So I'm going to put it at the end point there, and then I'm going to do a rotate. I'm going to rotate from there. With that as my reference, I'm going to go straight up. And then I'm going to rotate to a near snap on the line. So you see how that crow's foot stacks in there now? Okay, so we're going to do the same thing here. Move. I'm going to run the move command. Okay, but we're not going to go to this end. We're going to come all the way out to this far, far end point. We're going to rotate with the rotate command. Choose that as our base point and our reference point. Go straight down. I'm going to turn on my ortho so I get it right. And then turn the ortho off, and we're going to run to a near snap again. Okay, so now I have the crow's feet for this overall distance uh, lined up. Okay, and in my shop, you can usually do a um, an offset of point, point 0.2 on your scale, so point, 0 0.2 of your scale to get the text in the right spot. So in this case, I'm at a 60 scale, so that means I think I need a 12-foot offset. Oh, I'm not in the line we're drawing, so i got to retrace this. So we're, we're just trying to get a line we can use to align the label. And so I'm going to say O offset for offset. I think it's 12. Okay, and you can see I did my math right. So now we can copy this label down from the insert point. Okay, and this that's actually not going to work. So this this insert point should be should be middle center justified. So I'm going to offset six foot. Oh, go the other way. Okay, and we're going to change this. This should be um, 
middle center justified. Okay, so let's copy this now. Okay, and you can see that that text is getting a little bit too close together. Um, which is, uh, that is unfortunate. So what I'm going to do, let's see what size this text is. Yeah. So I need a little, the problem is I need a little more room. So I'm going to offset uh, another half. So I'm going to offset another, another um, half a tenth of my scale. And you guys will see here what I'm doing. Okay, so now I have this second label that lines up pretty good with these with this level with these level two crow's feet and so now I can put in my overall uh, my overall distances okay and they're going to be different because um, my my joiner deed I if I remember right had this had something that was about a half a foot different so I just drew a line over from end to end because I want to see what was our calculated okay our calculated was 420.98 Now we can open that adjoiner deed and say, well, what what did the adjoiner, what was the distance in the adjoiner? And it's labeled right here, 420.87. So um, I believe that's a little bit different. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's actually within a tenth of a foot. Um, um, so that's pretty close. Now I don't, I don't normally show a, a difference like that uh, if it's within a tenth. I would normally show this as record. Um, but in this case, just because of the way the survey panned out, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and show that. Okay. So that adjoiner is our, um, our, um, seven. That's our uh, West adjoiner actually. Okay. So I don't normally show, show something, uh, that's, that's a 10th or less, you know, depending on the survey. Um, so the, the alternative there is uh, is to just show this as uh, 42087. Okay, um, but I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. I think I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Okay. So the reason that overall label was important, guys, is because that overall label allows me to show how my survey fit with the adjoiner deed. Right? You can't do that on this shorter distance because this shorter distance isn't isn't in this adjoiner deed. So we had to come back out to the original parcel line, which ran to the center line of the road. Okay, so what this tells the retracing surveyor is my survey fit the adjoiner deed and uh, my vesting deed pretty close, right? Fit it pretty close. In fact, we should add our vesting deed. So our vesting deed is 42087. So uh, we can actually say here R1. Okay, so there is no difference in the length of that line between my deed and the easterly adjoining deed, but based on my survey, there is there is about a tenth of a difference. Now, how did that happen? If these two two deeds match, how did I come up with a different number? Well, I came up with a different number because I established this center line of Sheldon Road using uh, the the filed survey maps and not these deeds. And so, what that means is, let's see, is my distance longer or shorter? My distance is longer, which means I probably found this angle here at, at the top of the section. This angle at the northeast corner of the section I found to be slightly larger than the angle that was used when these D distances were calculated. Okay, but we fit pretty good. We fit, with, we, we fit within a tenth. But, you know, if you're if you're the retracing surveyor now, you know that the subject parcel deed and the east adjoiner deed matched exactly. I found something slightly bigger. Right? And what I probably need to do there is I need to show a difference in these, in uh, in the the record angle versus my calculated angle here. Um, so we may need to do that. And what I might do is just add a, a note here so I don't forget. So show record angle versus measured angle. I'm not 100% sure I can do that. Because um, I think my yeah I can because that ang that is the angle in my deed my deed goes to center line center line okay so we'll just put a note there I, I don't know if we'll get to that in this video but all right so uh, we've made it all the way around our subject parcel now so good job.
Good job, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you're still awake, congratulations. Okay, so what I would do now is I would just kind of start to work my way out on some of these tie lines. Okay, so for example, uh, it'd be nice to have a label here, um, and it'd be nice to have a label here, and then you can see my CAD tech has already set this uh, label up here, this overall. She already put that in, so that's good. So let, let's go ahead and um, so this is uh, this is going to be calculated. It's not going to show up in any deeds because it's just the distance between my ties out to the center line. Um, and th this will be the same thing. That will also be calculated. Uh, so we can actually put that in because it's the same bearing. We, we can just copy it. So um, and actually, so what you do here, we're just going to draw this line here. Oop. I'm just drawing this line so I can get the placement of the label in the right spot. Okay, so now that we have those two lines drawn, we can just copy this over. From midpoint to midpoint, because it's the same bearing, the alignment's the same. Okay, and this distance is 200.26. And so we can delete those. And it's just a calculated because this, this distance isn't in the record anywhere. It's just the, the, the distance to my tie line. Okay, so this is the important overall distance here for a historical measure. So um, this actually, this shape right here is lot five on the old sub map, okay, which I have. I, have, I can pull, I can show you guys that. So that's actually this lot five here. Okay. So that lot five, number five, is this shape right here, this larger rectangle. Okay, and what happened is somebody came in and subdivided this on a parcel map. And so this distance is what's left over on lot five after the parcel map did the subdivision. And uh, if you're familiar with public lands, you can see that this is, uh, lot five is, is about a uh, quarter, is it? Would be the east half of the northeast quarter of the section. So that's why we have a distance that's, that's 661 is close to aliquot. For the, for the public lands folks. So anyways, uh, what we want to do is open that parcel map and see if they show this distance per the record. So we can do that. I have the parcel map open. And so if we, if we go find that parcel map. So here's the parcel map. So they divided the south piece of that lot five and what, what we're part of this, this north half. And he shows right here, 66081. Oh, it gives me a warm fuzzy, right? Did I fit that? My survey fit that super good, so I like that. Okay, so we're only 400s out. Okay, so we're not very far out. So we'll say 661.81. Uh, Is it 81? Um, now that parcel map is reference, if you look at our list, it's R4. Okay, and I didn't measure this, so it's a calculated, so it's a C. Okay, what that means is when I located this parcel map on its mons, and measured up to the section corner that I established uh, using um, and checked using a couple other maps here, we fit really good. So we, we fit within a few hundreds. I, I don't like to show a distance normally um, that's only four hundreds out. Um, but in this case, I don't, I, I don't think I have a choice. I gotta show that. Um, I would like to just show that they match, um, but some of the math isn't, isn't gonna work if I do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that for now. All right, just to be clear, let me explain that. If I had established this section corner only using this parcel map, then, then these two would match. They're, they're, I'm a little bit long with my distance because I have some other maps here that I use to confirm the location of this corner, and, and that's why there's a slight difference in that distance there. Okay, so that, that's the important. Now, there are really no other distances to compare here other than we do have this distance. We can calculate this distance here, and we also have it in this adjoiner deed. So let's go ahead and do that one. Again, it's on the same bearing, so we can just copy the label down. Got to be careful with that perpendicular snap, though, don't I? Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this label down. It's the same bearing. Okay, 
So my calculated length of that line, again, it's calculated because I don't have monuments. So the calculated length of that line is 320.60. Now we can compare that to what's in the deed for the south adjoiner. If I can find the deed for the south adjoiner. Okay, so that one I may not have open. So let's go, I know I have it in the PDF, so let's open the deed for the south adjoiner. All right, it's that. It's the 2016 deed. I thought, I'm sorry guys, I thought I had all these open, but I don't. Uh, it's this deed right here, let's open it. This is the Kogo. Oh. Looks to me like I overwrote that Kogo, which is uh, not what I wanted to do. So let's fix that. We can fix that with what we have in the search drawing, I think. So I think I have that deed in the search drawing. So I do. So uh, so I goofed that up. So we're gonna just whoop, we're gonna just copy that and paste it in here. and save it okay so this is the uh, okay so it's not I, I have the center line distance which should be close but not might not be exact so it's 320.73 the center line distance okay um, so I am a, I am a little bit I am a little bit different is that the center line distance that is the center line distance okay so I am a little bit different there so they in in the deed in our joiner deed it's 320.73, and I have 320.60, so I found it short, and I knew that. Um, so 320.73, so let me explain how I knew that. So that is our south adjoiner R6. Okay, so <clears throat> I knew, so the, in, in this particular parcel, if you take our south adjoiner, and you anchor it to our grant deed. If you put our grant deed in per the uh, the section lines, the south adjoiner snaps right into that, matches perfect. But if you start down here, so so that's if you start from the north. Start at the north with the section lines, put our deed in, then put the the south adjoiner in. Everything fits perfect. But if you go the other way, if you start at the south here on Bradshaw Road and you put in that parcel map that we looked at. Uh, if you put in that this parcel map per the mons and then you snap the south adjoiner to that parcel map there's a small overlap it's about a half a foot to a foot along this line okay that means this survey down here of the parcel map and the surveys up here that establish these section lines they don't fit within a foot okay um, i'm not surprised actually fitting within one foot is up is pretty good for this area so what did i do i went ahead and held my deed now I, I didn't do that just because i'm working for this client um i held my deed because if you read the deeds they both commence from the north and they fit together well i think that was really the intent okay but i want you to understand somebody is going to get shorted here um so either either i build from the south and my parcel gets shorted or i build from the north and this guy gets shorted or one of these two parcels gets shorted okay what i did is is I, I chose to short the, the south adjoiner because of the way the deeds were written. And also, that one-foot gap falls in a, in, a, in, a, in the middle of a creek here, and uh, nobody's going to be fighting over that one foot. <laughs> um, so I, I felt pretty comfortable with that solution. And so you can see that here. right? You can, you can see that there, uh, uh, there is a slight difference there. There's 1,300 difference uh, between what I calculated and what was in the, uh, what was in the south adjoiner. Okay, now that may require, uh, you know, that would be a good thing to put in our narrative when we talk about our adjoiners. It's just the fact that depending on how you place the south adjoiner, either coming from the south or coming from the north, you, you get some differences in the lines, but I'm, I'm showing that. Okay, so what this means is when I show this 32060C and 32073R6, that means I shorted this lot. I shorted this parcel 1300s. Because my C value, my calculated value for that distance is shorter than the R6. 
Okay, now, to, to, if you were really a gentleman and a scholar, uh, you would also show that down here. Okay, and that, that's, a, that's an odd looking gap. We shouldn't have that gap there. Okay, so that gap is because I didn't, this, this line didn't get run all the way across. So that's why I told you sometimes you have to have your line work drawing open so you can fix that. That should have got run across. Now, to, to really do a good job with our distance labels of explaining our boundary, um, if, if what I'm telling you is the truth, and I hope it is, then we should really be able to also see that shortage on this distance here. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let, let's put a distance in there. We don't have one, but we can add one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, draw a line here. Okay, let's fix that crow's feet too. Okay, and that means this distance needs to get updated. So let's check that distance. Let's fix that while we're in here. Okay, so the distance is 672.11. So let's fix that. And I'll explain again. I'll, we'll look at this in a minute and we'll, we'll look at the differences. Okay, so this is my calculated distance here. Okay, it's 135.08. Now my guess is that's shorter than what's in the south adjoiner deed. So we're going to look at that here in a second. <clears throat> All right, so we've got uh, 135.08. Okay, now that's our calculated, because I don't have any monuments there. It's calculated per our survey. Okay, now my guess is that distance in the adjoiner, south adjoiner, is shorter. Or, I'm sorry, is longer. Uh, nope, it's not. It's 134.88. Okay, so what that means is there's just a skew on this line. So, um, so I actually found it longer, 134.88. Now, if you look at that, again, I'm within a couple tenths here. Right, like this ain't worth fighting out. You know, they they didn't have it that close when they did the when they did these original surveys. They couldn't they couldn't measure a tenth <laughs> when these deeds were written. All right, so it, you know, I get surveyors all the time like they're calling a monument off two hundreds. I, mean, I think that's silly most of the time. All right, so it's one thirty four eighty eight, and that's our south adjoiner, so R six. So what these labels these record reference labels on these distances are showing the retracing surveyors that hey um, you know my calculation for the dimensions of this south adjoiner don't line up perfectly with the south adjoiner deed um, you know this this deed right here this parcel is getting pinched because there's there's a slight shortage you know there's a there's a two or three tenth shortage and so you can you can see that and by the way, if I was surveying for this guy and not this guy, I'd have come up with the same answer here. So that wouldn't have changed my answer. I think this is the best solution based on how the deeds were written. Okay? So, but there is a difference. There's a couple tenth difference there. Now, it'd be nice if we had some crow's feet there, right? Um, we don't want to have a distance like that without crow's feet. Uh, but that probably means our label isn't going to fit. So if I just copy this crow's foot. Uh, my guess is it's not going to fit. Oh man, that isn't going to work. Let's let's do this one. So you can see I'm going to end up running into my my label now. What you can do is this is an old guy trick. Since I know these are the same bearing, I don't have to show the bearing. I can just show the distance because that's a shorter segment, um, and so so that that'll actually that'll work really good in that particular case. All right, and then I can just copy this other crow's feet over here. Okay, so now we're now we're showing that difference. Okay, <clears throat> now let's go back and look at this line. So this is the south line of our south adjoiner. Okay, which also happens to be the north line of that parcel map. So let's see how those compare. So we calculated 672.11, and let's see what the parcel map showed. So across the top, 
all the way over to the boundary of lot 5. That's what we're worried about. Let's see, does he give us that distance? It does not look like he gives us that distance. 670.51, is that close? Yeah, so it, it is close. So I think this is his measured. It's a little hard to tell here. Let's see if we can... Record, 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 record. Okay, so if it's in brackets, it's record. Okay, so I think this 670.51 is what he actually measured from the center line of Bradshaw over to that west boundary of lot 5. Okay, now, I used his map and established this same line. By the way, found a monument here, right? So I'll, I feel really confident about where I have that west boundary of lot 5. And by the way, I found it two feet farther west than he did. And there's really good occupation on that line. Okay, so um, we're going to show that. So we're going to show this is our calculated for our current survey. Okay, and then we're going to show 670.51 R. That's that parcel map. Uh, that's R4. Okay, so that's a pretty big difference. It's two feet. Okay, so what that means is I found this line two feet longer than the guy on this parcel map found it. Now, I found a monument here. And there's a really good line of occupation here. I feel really good about where I am. These deeds fit pretty good. They fit pretty good. Um, I, I'm, I'm very confident in my line. Now, I will tell you, though, when you hold my deed at the corner and you come over and you look at this distance that's left over for these two deeds, there is a two, two or three foot discrepancy. Um, so I think, you know, north, south. All these deeds in lot five fit pretty good, but east west, when you get all the way, you know, there's some, there's a couple feet of discrepancy there, and and, and uh, we'll we'll look at that when we get over to these, when we do these distances at the top here. Okay, so um, I don't think I have any references that show this distance all the way across the top. That parcel map might we'll look. So that's a C. Let's go see if that parcel map shows it. All right, so he doesn't show it, but we might be able to. Oh, he does. So he shows 13, 1309. What do we show? So we're pretty. We're within two tenths. Like I said, I think this north-south dimension of lot five fits pretty good. So he's within two tenths. So it's good that we can show that. 131309. Okay, that's R4. <clears throat> All right, so we fit really good with him. We fit within a couple tenths north south we're just in a, in a different spot east west okay so that fits well now again why is there a difference well i established these this this section line and this section line using some maps up here and this guy was working from the south and he just didn't get the same answer as i did by a couple tenths but like i said when they were writing these deeds you know even when they were doing this parcel map let's see how old this is 1987 i was seven years old you know i'm not 100 percent sure they could measure 1,300 feet within a tenth in 1987. Not without a lot of work. And, and I don't think the land was worth that much work out here. All right, so I feel pretty good. Now, it'd be nice. I don't know that I need to go any, any farther south on this line, although I'll probably uh, put a reference in here. Um, and it'd be good to get it'd be good to get um, our calculated and this deed distance in here, um, and the same thing here. We're gonna have two deeds here. We can show this two distances here, show how they fit, and we should show these across the top. Okay, now I'm not gonna make you watch me do that. So I think what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna go ahead and add those. So I'll get this distance in uh, with some references and so this. Compare these two distances with some references and do the same thing across the top here and I'll add overall so you can see the difference between these two deeds when you add them up and what we calculate overall because there is a shortage. And then I'll probably do uh, I'll probably do the same thing here. I'll probably break this up and have a have a shorter distance here. I'm gonna leave that overall, but what I'm gonna do is this is gonna end up getting changed to a level two label so that I can fit the individual segments in so but I don't want to make you guys watch that this video is already already getting long enough so I'm gonna go ahead and in this video I might do one more video when I'm done with the labeling to just go in and show you 
show you some more of, of how the, the math worked out. Uh, but I hope I hope this helps you guys. I hope this I hope this video uh, helps you understand kind of how you communicate your boundary resolution with your um, with your distance labels in your boundary anode drawing.